In this video, we're going to be talking about the basics of experiments, uh, particularly the post-test and pre-test, post-test designs. So with any experiment, the biggest hallmark of it is that you're controlling everything in a lab setting. So you're examining behavior of humans uh, in a setting where you can control everything. Uh, and because you can control everything, you can separate all of the uh, confounds out of a study so that if you're studying something in the real world, you can't control, obviously, uh, the environment itself, anyone that might be interacting with your participants, um, you know, any changes that might occur between the different conditions or between uh, participants in the same condition. And so at the end of the day, you don't really know what's causing behavior in your participants. But if you can control all that, then you can vary just one variable uh, between groups and then figure out exactly what uh, that variable could cause in, in terms of differences between groups. And experiments are always approached quantitatively. So they always describe behaviors in numbers as opposed to just doing interviews or describing things in plain text. Uh, we always want to have numbers that we can analyze things statistically to look for things like significance. So with experiments, you want to control everything that affects participants. And uh, one key part about this is making sure all participants have the same experience except for the one thing that you're varying between groups. So for each participant, you want to make sure that they're in the same setting, the same room, with the same temperature and lighting, the same experimental materials, the same experimenters, the same confederates. Again, wanting to keep everything the same because all these things can affect behavior. You want to keep them all the same except for the one thing that you're varying between conditions. That way, if there's any group differences at the very end of the experiment, then you know it must be that one thing you're manipulating and not any of these other extraneous factors that could be causing differences between groups. So with every aspect being pre-planned, you have to put in a lot of effort to make sure that you have everything uh, scheduled, planned out, arranged, organized before you even set up the experiment. And then you want to come in and check on the room each time uh, between participants so that you can make sure that the room is set up the exact same way. Even if a participant does something like put trash on the floor, you have to clean up the trash because studies show that even something as small as a little bit of litter on the ground can have an effect on behavior. Also, if you have any confederates or experimenters and ranking participants, you have to make sure that their behavior is scripted and it's the same every time. So usually you have to rehearse things a few times before you even start running participants just to make sure you have everything down. So here's a little example, and this is an example of an experiment that is missing uh, a strong element of control. So try to, as I'm getting into this example, try to spot the area which it really lacks control. So let's say the experiment is attempting to test out some new type of test taking strategy uh, that takes place in groups and to see the effectiveness of that on you know, how people score in tests. So with the experimental group, you're gonna have them come into a lab and train in this new test taking strategy in groups. And let's say for the control group, since you don't need the, to have them do any type of training, you, you want them to be controls, you just have them take the test at home online. So let's say you do this experiment, in the end, the experimental group indeed finds that uh, their scores are higher so it looks as if the test taking strategy worked, but you gotta think, well, what else might be causing this effect? Because here you have a lot of things that differ between the two groups besides just this new test taking strategy. So for one thing, since the participants in the control group are at home, there could be distractions at the home. They could be what we call satisfying. So satisfying just means that participants aren't really taking the experiment seriously. And so they're just uh, putting forward what little effort they, they need to get by. And this is very common, especially when you do a home experiment. Uh, if you have them come into the lab, people usually tend to take an experiment a bit more seriously. But also there could be social facilitation effects, meaning that when people are surrounded by others, like they are in the experimental condition, they might perform uh, better because they sort of want to prove themselves to other people to put their best self forward. So in this way, there's too many things differing between the two groups to really say that's the test taking strategy that's causing any differences in test scores. It could be any one of these factors. So to make it a better experiment, you could have the experimental group come in just like before, come to the lab, get trained in groups, and then get tested. And then with the control group, you have to make sure they have the exact same experience except for that test taking strategy. So they still have to come to the lab, they still need to get in tr uh, groups, but then they can train in an unrelated activity that's not the test taking strategy, and then get tested. So in this way, if the experiment group still shows higher scores, it must be because of the new test taking strategy because everything else is kept constant between these two groups. And that's really the key to an experiment. If you can keep everything constant, 
uh, between all the participants except for the independent variable, and then you see a difference at the end, it must be the independent variable causing that difference. And of course, no one experiment is perfect. There can be unforeseen confounds, uh, but for the most part, this is how theoretically experiments work to yield cause and effect results. Now, of course, experiments in experiments, you can't control for everything. The biggest thing you can't control for are uh, the different characteristics that participants are bringing in to the equation. So what happens if the control group and experimental group just happen to differ in things like intelligence? So since we can't control for things like intelligence, schooling, upbringing between all the participants, we have to use something called randomization to control for these factors. So this is, of course, what we call uh, random assignment. So that if you have an intelligent person, someone with a really high IQ, come in, they have just as likely a chance of being randomly assigned to group A, the experimental group, or group B, the control group. So in this way, all of the high intelligent individuals, all the low intelligent individuals, all the people with maybe really high caliber schooling or low caliber schooling, they're all getting equally divided randomly between the two conditions. So that in the end, the two conditions should really be balanced with all these factors. In simulation studies, looking at simulated data shows that with any factor, with almost any amount of variability, if you have 30 people in each condition, all these factors are going to get equally spread out through random assignment. So if you have a really small sample, uh, you know, only 10 people per condition, even random assignment can't really work for you in making sure the groups are balanced. But if you have at least 30, then you know that your groups are going to be pretty well balanced in all participant factors. So that at the end of the day, you're going to have just about as many, you know, highly intelligent people in group A as group B, or just as many people with high caliber schooling in group A versus group B. And you don't even have to check for all that. That just all works through random assignment. So it's through these two factors, and this is a big sort of thing that we talk about as separating experiments from all the other types of studies, is that experiments uh, have control of environmental factors and then randomization of participant factors. So we make sure the environment is the same for all participants in all conditions except for the independent variable. And then we use random assignment to control for all those participant factors that we really can't control for. You know, people just coming in with their own predilections, personalities, all that kind of thing. And this is a, the best way to rule out all confounds. So a confound is any variable that you think might be affecting your DV, but also is varying between groups. So for example, in the, in the example we just talked about, uh, distractions at home. So having only one group work at home, the other in a lab, distractions created at home is the confound because it's present only in the control group. So it varies along with the IV and it's likely to affect test scores, probably making them worse. So it's affecting the DV. So if you have any factor that's affecting the DV, but it's spread equally across conditions, that's not a confound because basically it cancels itself out. So if we had both groups do the task at home, then they both had likely an equal amount of distractions. Then really, again, it's gonna be the independent variable, maybe a new test taking strategy that's going to cause differences between those groups because distractions at home would be balanced. So any confound has to affect the ID, uh, sorry, the dependent variable and also be different between the different groups in order to, to yield those between group differences at the end of the study. Uh, and this is why good experiments, at least, have high internal validity. If you have good control over everything participants are being exposed to and you have a randomization between participants uh, in terms of, of assigning them to different groups, then you know that the groups are well balanced and anything that differentiates the groups at the end. So if one group scores higher on a test or shows more behaviors or has a happier mood at the end of the study, then you know because you've, you've controlled for everything else that that difference must be due to the independent variable. And this is really the hallmark of science. This is what separates science from lots of other fields of inquiry is that science is really good at testing cause and effect. And it does this through those randomization and experimental control. That's why we think of experiments as being the best type of study really in any scientific domain.